Let's run through a few simple circuit examples. In this example, I've got just a series circuit, has three resistors, and it's all attached to a good old 24 volt battery. So what I'd like to know for each and every one of these resistors, what is the current going through it in amps, and what is the voltage drop over it in volts? Now in order to do that, I first need to figure out the equivalent resistance of the circuit and the total current running through it. Well, the nice thing is, for a series circuit, the equivalent resistance is really easy to figure out. It's just the sum of each of the individual resistors all in series. All right. Well, since R1 is 4, R2 is 2, and R3 is 6, I'm pretty good at adding numbers like these. 4 plus 2 plus 6 is 12 ohms. Hooray! So my equivalent resistance is 12 ohms. Now I can use this equivalent resistance to find the total current coming out of the battery using good old Ohm's law, V equals IR. So the voltage of the battery equals the current coming out times the equivalent resistance. Well, if I'm dealing with a 24 volt battery, then current is just going to be V over R, which will be 24 volts divided by the 12 ohms. And I'm pretty good at that in my head as well. That's just two amps. From here, I can begin to fill in this chart and figure out the values for each and every resistor. Looking back at the picture, I now know that two amps are coming out of this battery. And because there are no junctions in the circuit, these two amps have nowhere to go but through R1 and nowhere to go but through R2 and nowhere to go but through R3. It's easy to confuse current and voltage. Once you drop voltage, that voltage is gone at that resistor. With current, as it travels through, it continues on to the next little bit of wire. Think of the current as water molecules. When they pass over a waterfall, they don't disappear. The energy is now gone, that potential energy is now gone but the water molecules themselves continue to move down the river. So the two amps, once they go through R1, keep on trucking through R2 and keep on trucking through R3. Well, this makes the chart really easy for me to fill out. The current through R1 is my full two amps, and through R2 is my full two amps, and through R3 is my full two amps. Now I can give a good old slice of V equals IR to each of my individual columns. So 4 times 2 is 8 volts, 2 times 2 is 4 volts, and 6 times 2 is 12 volts. Okay, now I can go back and double check myself. For one single loop around the circuit, as an electron, if I picked up 24 volts, I better drop off 24 volts. Okay, so I leave the positive terminal, I'm at 24 volts, I get to R1 and I drop 8 of them. Okay. 24 minus 8 is 16. So now I'm at 16 volts and I travel along, travel along, get to R2 where I drop 4 volts. Well, 16 minus 4 is 12, all right? So now I'm at 12 volts and I'm traveling along, traveling along, get to R3 and I drop 12 volts. Hey, 12 minus 12 is 0, which is perfect. I'm now back at 0 volts before I enter the negative terminal of the battery again, which is exactly where I need to be. The thing I love about these circuit problems is that you can always go back and double check yourself using methods like these. That way you'll know instantly if you're right or if you're wrong. Let's do another example, this time with a parallel circuit. I'm still attached to a 24 volt battery, but now I've got one that is 8 ohms, one that is 4 ohms, and one that is 8 ohms again. Once again, I'm going to start by finding the equivalent resistance, but this time I need to use my parallel equation since these resistors are not in series, they're in parallel with each other. This equation's a little more tricky, but it's still doable. I've now replaced my variables with their values, and I'm just going to add some fractions. I'm going to find the lowest common denominator. I can basically change this 1 fourth into 2 eighths. And then I've got 1 eighth plus 2 eighths plus 1 eighth is 4 eighths. Now, 
don't get confused and immediately think that there is one half ohms of equivalent resistance. There's not. This whole thing is equal to one over the equivalent resistance. So to find the equivalent resistance, you need to take the reciprocal of this fraction right here. Eight over four, aha, okay. Or you can think of it as cross multiplying. I multiplied REQ up and then divided four eighths over. Eight over four is just two. So I have an equivalent resistance of two ohms. I can now find the total current using once again, you guess it, V equals I R. So I is V over R, and I'm looking at 24 volts divided by two ohms of equivalent resistance. That battery is gonna be spitting out 12 amps of current. So I've got 12 amps of current coming out here, and uh-oh, I arrive at a junction. So some of my current is gonna go this way, some of my current is gonna go this way. And I don't know how much is going one way or the other yet. So I can't just hop back over and fill in my current values with 12 because that current has split before it's gotten to any resistor. Uh-oh. So let me back up. I can imagine a trip for a single electron comes out of the battery, goes through R1, and comes back. And for that one single electron, since they picked up 24 volts, by the end of their trip around the circuit, they have to drop off 24 volts as well. The only place they have to do that is R1. So the voltage drop on R1 had better be 24 volts. I can do that again. Uh, imagine another trip. So a fellow electron, one of this guy's friends, pops out goes across and takes the R2 path. Once again, this electron picked up 24 volts from the battery, needs to drop off 24 volts at R2. And what the heck, let's do it one more time. Another electron comes out of the battery, goes through R3, back. That electron needs to drop off 24 volts. Because R3 was the only resistor this electron encountered, it better drop off 24 volts there. Now, a word of caution, this only works when the electron only runs into one resistor. If you encounter multiple resistors along a single path, then in total you need to drop these 24 volts, but it's not gonna be all at once at one of these resistors. But since this is the case for my current circuit, that should work just fine. Well, now that I know that 24 volts are being dropped, uh, I've got two of the three ingredients. I can find the third. 24 divided by eight is three. So three amps are going this way. If I look back at my circuit, I know that 12 amps of total current came out this way. And three of those amps are gonna go down through R1 here. That means I'm left with only nine more amps continuing on to the right. But these nine amps run into another junction, so it's gonna split off again. To figure out how much is gonna go what way, I can use Ohm's law once again. 24 volts divided by four ohms is six amps. So six amps are gonna travel down through R2, leaving only three amps to continue. Hmm, well I hope that I end up with three amps when I divide 24 by eight. Oh yes I do, perfect. So that all checks out. At the very end, my three amps and six amps come back together. And that rejoins these three amps to bring all 12 back to the battery, just like it should. Very nice. And let's do just one more. This one's a little bit more tricky. If you look at R1 right here, it kind of looks like it's in series with R2. But it's not necessarily because there's a path that goes through R1 and R3 and skips R2 entirely. So, because we run into R1 and then a junction point, neither R2 nor R3 can be said to be in series with R1 over here. 
So here's where we gotta break it down bit by bit. When you run into circuits that have both series and parallel components, the best way to deal with it is to break it down little section by little section. See where you can find spots that are perfectly in series with each other, and by that I mean one resistor after another with no junction in between them, or little regions of perfect parallel. And by that I mean between one junction and another, there are only a few paths, and each path consists of only one resistor. And that's what we've got over here. My blue path and my green path each only have one resistor. So I can start by breaking just that section down. Since they're in parallel, I find the equivalent resistance of that section using my parallel equation. So here I've called this R2 slash 3. This is the equivalent resistance between resistors 2 and 3 only. So it'll be 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Let's see, that's 2 6 plus 1 6. That's 3 6. And then I've got to take the inverse of that. I've got to take the reciprocal so that the equivalent resistance of this section is 6 over 3, which is 2. What I can do now is essentially redraw this circuit replacing R2 and R3 with a single 2-ohm resistor. To help you visualize that, I'm going to label this junction A, and I'm going to label this junction B. When I redraw my circuit, between junction A and junction B, there's an equivalent of 2 ohms. This is what I call, and this is just a Martin term, this is not an official term at all. This is what I call a ghost resistor. Basically what I mean by that is there's not actually a 2 ohm resistor here. None of my resistors in the circuit have 2 ohms. But the battery doesn't know that. And the battery is going to behave exactly the same as if there were a 2 ohm resistor right here. So again, this is a Martin term. I call it a ghost resistor. Redraw your circuit uh, with these ghost resistors to make them simpler. And now I've got a simple series circuit with the equivalent resistance of 4 plus 2. Okay. And 4 plus 2 is 6. So I could redraw my circuit yet again as if there's just a single 6 ohm resistor next to a 24 volt battery. Here's what that means. My equivalent resistance in the circuit is 6 ohms and my total current is well, V over R, that'll be 24 divided by 6, that'll be 4 amps. Nice. So with this new information, I can head back to my original picture and draw my 4 amps coming out of the battery. And check it out, all 4 amps have to go through R1. Now after they pass through R1, they split one way or the other. But that's enough for me to put 4 amps through R1, and I can find the voltage drop over R1 through V equals IR. 4 times 4 is 16 volts. Okay, so minus 16 volts as 4 amps go through it. Here's what that means. If I'm an electron and I travel out of the battery, I have 24 volts, I drop 16 of them and that means I only have eight remaining. If I go down the path through R2, I better drop all eight of them so that I'm back at zero before I go back into the battery. If alternatively, I go through R3, I better drop off eight volts as well. So no matter if I go through R2 or R3, I better drop off eight volts. And now I've completed two of the three in this column, so I can find the current through it, just through V divided by R to get the current. 8 thirds is 2 and 2 thirds, and 8 sixth is 1 and 1 third. And I can use what I know about Kirchhoff's law to see if this works. If I've got 2 and 2 thirds going down this way, and I've got 1 and 1 third going this way, they should add up to 4, because at this junction, I've got four coming in, I need to have four total coming out. Well, sure enough, two and two thirds plus one and one third, that's three and three thirds, or three and one, that's four. 
beautiful.